Example 4. For each of the following equations, use a trigonometric identity to find all solutions. Now, we never actually want to find some solutions, so because of that fact, we're actually going to use factoring quite a bit in these trigonometric equations because we want to avoid extraneous solutions. Now, in this particular question, part A, 1 plus cosine 2 theta equals cosine theta. Here's all the identities we have at the moment. And one of these actually stands out. It is this, cosine 2 theta equals, and we have this right here, equals 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Now the reason that will be useful as opposed to the version over here with sine squared or cosine squared minus sine squared is because in our equation we have our cosine 2 theta and a cosine here. If we'd had a sine over here, we might have chosen to use this other version. So let's go ahead and replace the cosine 2 theta in that equation with a 2 cosine theta minus 1, cosine squared theta minus 1. Doing that, we can simplify this to 2 cosine squared theta equals cosine theta. And as I said earlier, we want to avoid extraneous solutions, so we're going to factor. So we'll get this, set this equal to 0, which means we will need to subtract cosine theta. And we now have 2 cosine squared theta minus cosine theta equals 0. And then factoring out a cosine, 2 cosine theta minus 1. Now we can't factor that expression anymore, but now we can set them each equal to 0. So we know we're going to need cosine theta equals 0 or cosine theta equals positive 1 half, adding 1 dividing by 2. And based on our trigonometric knowledge, we know that cosine theta is equal to 0 whenever theta is pi halves plus k pi, okay, multiples of pi. Okay, and just to back that up, we know that our cosine is theta, cosine theta is going to be 0 whenever we are here and here. That is pi over 2 plus pi plus 2 pi plus 3 pi, etc. And we now we know when that uh, cosine theta is 1 half whenever we are at pi over 3. Do that in a different color. Whenever we're at pi over 3, our cosine is 1 half. And then it also happens at negative pi. And then also, again, at multiples of 2 pi as you wrap around the circle. So we have pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, and we can change the way we wrote that to be pi k to match that, and then also at negative pi thirds plus 2 pi k, and all of those are when k is an integer. Now we have no extraneous solutions, we could check that of course, but we don't have any extraneous solutions, so this is our answer. All right, now part B, we have sine 2 theta equals tangent theta. Now another trigonometric identity that we can use, we'll just scroll back up here, that will be useful here is tangent. Okay, tangent, we can write that as a ratio of sine over cosine. So let's apply that identity to be sine 2 theta. I want to keep that as a quantity equals sine theta over cosine theta. Uh, writing it in that way, well, you know, there's another identity we could use. We could get turn that from sine 2 theta into 2 sine theta cosine theta. So let's go ahead and rewrite that. 2 sine theta cosine theta, and that will be equal to sine theta over cosine theta. 
All right, now we want to avoid this at all costs, but here we are going to have to clear that fraction. We're going to have to multiply by cosine theta. We'll multiply over here by cosine theta as well, of course. Keep that equation equal. So we have 2 sine theta and then a cosine squared theta equals sine theta. And then rearranging this, we get 2 sine theta cosine squared theta minus sine theta equals 0. Now, I sa I've said this repeatedly. We want to avoid extraneous solutions. But what I just did here is actually potentially um, introduce some extraneous solutions because if cosine theta is actually 0, then we have a problem. We've just multiplied by 0, and everything following that is invalid. So I want to make a side note over here that cosine theta cannot be 0, which means that theta cannot be pi over 2 or pi over 2 with some multiple of pi, as we just saw from our unit circle. So keep this in mind as we go forward. Okay, now we can go ahead and factor this, and as long as we're looking out for that potential problem um, of extraneous solutions, then as long as we're looking out for that, then we should be all right. All right, so this will be sine theta if we factor that. 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 equals 0. And we know that sine theta is equal to 0 whenever we have some multiple of pi. And again, you can verify that from your unit circle. And actually, this indicates, let's just bring that over here, that indicates that cosine theta is equal to, let's see, the square root of 1 half, which is root 2 over 2. And we have square root, so plus or minus. And cosine theta is equal to the square root of 2 over 2, or negative square root of 2 over 2, at, let's go back and look at our, look at our circle. So at pi over 4, okay, at pi over 4, and then also, well, it's, so the cosine is positive at these two places, since the cosine is the x value, and it is negative square root of 2 over 2 here. So that represents a few different things. So that's going to be pi over 4 plus pi over 2k. So every pi over 2, every 90 degree rotation we have, that is going to be another solution. And again, that is valid for k and the integers. So for k being positive 1, negative 1, positive 2, negative 2, 0, positive 2, negative 2, th ne positive 3, negative 3, etc., etc. Now, one thing we need to look out for is look back at our restriction. Okay, Theta cannot be equal to pi over 2 plus some multiple of, of pi k. Well, pi k is never going to be equal to that. We can see that pretty clearly because it's always going to be here, 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 here. It's these two spots, and we're saying it can't be here. Okay, so that first part part does not invalidate that. And then the pi over 4, again, we're saying that these two values cannot happen. Well, none of our solutions we've written here are at those places. So this is, in fact, our solution because there are no extraneous solutions.